Welcome for another live stream. Um, interesting morning for us here at the office and weather and so on, but I pray that you are having a great day, and I'm sure you're going to be listening, it, listening to this and viewing this at some point in time in the future, and none of it really matters. So God bless you. Thanks for being with us here today. Life changes. What do we want to try to accomplish here? Um, specifically, my goal is is to try to delineate the differences between resolutions and revolution. Um, resolutions uh, supposed to mean that I resolve to make this change. Why are we not successful that? We are pitifully unsuccessful. What I would say to you, if the world is unsuccessful at these areas and making, quote, their New Year's resolutions, let's burrow down into the facts of all facts, beyond facts, the Word of God that drives us and that teaches us that if we are faithful, that if we are willing to be servants, that if we're willing to let go of our past, that if we're not full of regrets, see, we're not weighted to the past, we're not dragged down by our past, if we are faithful to Him, there's character that's developing in us. That character then allows us to truly make life changes. So I could tell you, for example, just picked it up this morning. Uh, just some key, key notes at one of, the, one of the journals that says, hey, help people make life changes. And what you do is, you know, you just tell them to, well, I had it here somewhere here. Well, just do this. How to make your realistic diet and exercise goals for the new year. Here it is out of a journal. Not even, oh, medical news today. And it says, hey, just tell people to eat smaller meals. Smaller size plates. There you go. Smaller bowls. Think before you eat. Is it worth the calories that you're consuming? Stop drinking those sugar-sweetened beverages today, now. Stop eating when, um, when you're satisfied, even... If you're full, I don't know what that means, but eat mindfully. I'm okay with that. Don't eat while you're multitasking. You shouldn't be doing multiple things and, and you know, eating a hoagie, for goodness sake, because you're usually going to eat more. I would agree with that. Try writing down everything you eat. People are not going to do that. Um, it will make you more aware. But my point is, anybody can give you a six-point or an eight-point to-do list. What allows you to maintain this? What can help us to do this as opposed to doing it for three days, four days, comes, you know, the middle of the month or week or two into this, and now I'm tired, I forgot, I got busy, had to take the kids to, to practice, had to take the girls to dance, um, I have to do something for my in-laws, it's a birth, and everything goes. Faithfulness faithfulness. Let me read you quickly out of the scripture because I believe that this is where this all emanates from. And let's start with Proverbs. Let love and faithfulness, let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablets of your heart. And then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Don't just turn over a new leaf. Let's make life changes. So when I begin to give you some of these tips, which we're going to get to in a minute, and you're wondering why, why am I spending time with this? Well, I'm going to spend a lot of time with this. Because this will drive you to help you follow those little basic tips. If that were the case... Every American would be doing this. Oh, I, of course. Yeah, I use smaller bowls, smaller dishes. It works like a charm. I've lost 14 pounds. I feel great. And I even get up earlier in the morning because I'm eating less. I just follow this little tip that I found in a book. Why do we not follow through with these? Why do we not take these to heart? Why are we not committed to them? Why do we lose our faithfulness? Because it's all based on what we are doing, and it's not rooted in tangible, life-changing components that will change you, that'll change your heart, that changes me, that helps to make us more faithful, helps to make us more loving, helps us to make us more forgiving. It allows me to engage in this. I can remain faithful to this. 
stop drinking those sugar sweetened beverages. Hey, no problem. No problem. Just stop it. Then I think we're done. We're five minutes in, just done. Just do those basic components and away you go. I wish it were that easy. Let me give you another scripture just to encourage you today. Acts. And it says, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. And when they saw the courage, see, people around Peter and John says, when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. See, if we spend time in the Word of God, it will change who you are, whether you're schooled, unschooled, whether you're knowledgeable, unknowledgeable, it'll change the character, it'll change the, the fi fabric, the fiber of your very core of your being. It'll then allow you to make the changes that I believe that we need to make to improve our health. Let me give you one more. Here is a trustworthy saying in 2 Timothy 2. If we, die with, if we died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he'll disown us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. Those key scriptures are all about me, and there's more. There's tons. And we'll, close, we'll come to a little bit more at the end of the show. But if we are faithful, if we remain faithful to him, if we remain faithful to the word, I believe we can then engage some of the characteristics that I'm going to give you today. So where will we start? Some basic life tips. Some of this I've covered in some past teachings, but I'm going to bring it all together today. That literally 80 to 85 percent of the outcome of our health is dependent upon lifestyle, what we do, how we treat ourselves, how we eat, how we sleep, what we are exposed to, chemicals and otherwise, what we do. In other words, to an 80 percentile, the, the, the issues of life that affect us, this physical health, this physical body, disease and otherwise, very much comes from an external um, component or an external environment. Probably 15%, maybe 20 is your genes. So it's not all just about your genes. So let's make sure that we separate gene versus environment here and understand that that is, um, you know, we're just going to say for sake of argument, we're just going to do this, 85, 15, that's our core. That's where we're starting. Number two, let's understand that if I can modify, see, I can't necessarily change this, but I can most certainly make changes here. See, if I make changes here, and I begin to subtly begin to improve my environment or what's affecting me externally, it will eventually create change internally in how the body is working. So number one, number one key life change that we want to zero in on, we've got to get ourselves to a reasonable, healthy weight. This is a big issue. And, and I would venture to say that probably 7 out of 10 that are watching this today already battle this problem. And if they don't already battle this per se, they are battling scenarios that are leading to this, insulin resistance and so on. So with the weight issues, insulin resistance is the key because then it begins to lead to what's called metabolic syndrome, which then is blood pressure high triglycerides, fatty liver, bones are breaking down, joints begin to break down, my cardiovascular system becomes inflamed and I get hardening of the arteries. Hence, so you send me an email and we talk about either your joints or we talk about your cardiovascular issue or we talk about bone health. <clears throat> the list could go on. Understand that many times it is centered along, along the lines of insulin resistance leading to metabolic syndrome and will eventually affect this. And there will certainly, we will find in essence, 
that our health, our longevity, long term is severely compromised. So you're going to have higher rates of type 2 diabetes. You say, well, Joe, I, I kind of already know that. How do I stop that? I, I'm getting there. The first point is you've got to know that this is a key player. Number two, we've got to get you to understand that our movements and our exercise is key to health. If I move, we just talked about it this morning, that the inability to stand on one leg for 20 seconds or balance on one leg for 20 seconds is a key indicator, and I'm doing it right now, and I just step down because I look down. Don't look down, whatever you do, look straight ahead. If you can't balance on one foot, that's a significant indicator of mental or cognitive potential problems or issues. Your stroke risk goes up. What's that have to do with exercise? Everything. You oxygenate tissues. You strengthen the connective tissue, ligaments, musculature. You increase blood flow to the brain. If I get you to be physically active, I can almost promise you that you will live a healthier, more fruitful more productive life. We, my messages are never geared towards you living in this physical body forever. Many of my journals and many of my teachings come forth. You know, well, we're looking for this because we're look. This is the anti-aging gene that we're going to discover, and we're on to something. <clears throat> and and this is the you know almost the live forever. We're going to live to 130 if we could get folks taking these three supplements and we can alter this gene expression. Time out. We're not living forever. This body, unfortunately, will pass. And I'm going to go to be with him. And ultimately, you and I will have to be able to either face our maker and our creator with that we've been reconciled through what he has sent for us, his son, or we're going to suffer a future and eternity of damnation. And I've had people say, to me, well, what kind of a loving God, a righteous God, what kind of a loving God would do that? You call your God, yeah, I, I, because the, he is giving you multiple, multiple opportunities to surrender your life to him. But this life, this here and now, we're called to be productive. We're called to be um, effective, effectual workers for him, for the kingdom, for your family, to be able to extend your life, your very being in existence to others. If I can get you to move, I can improve health outcomes. Number three, and we figured this would happen, but number three, is rest, sleep. Human growth hormone is made. I repair better, my brain is repaired. <clears throat> I have less leanings towards high blood pressure if I sleep and get adequate rest. I have less indications for um, not only hypertension, but type 2 diabetes, insulin resistance. My human growth hormone production will improve, and even my body will repair better, and I'm able to maintain my hormone levels better, male and female, and I can not only just repair, but I won't break down is quickly because I'm making human growth hormone. The key to sleep to me and rest is human growth hormone production. And that occurs when you sleep and you get into deep sleep, rapid eye movement sleep, you're getting into REM sleep, you have adequate amino acids on board, you will then begin to make this guy, which will help to preserve and protect your body. Next. I believe that we've got to be passionate. We have to be passionate about life, about spreading the gospel, about spreading the love of God to others, the love of Christ to others. We've got to be passionate in our living. We should, our goal, our day should be not just to find pleasure in making money or pleasure in, you know, whatever it is that you do, your business or whatever it is, but then we should find pleasure and passion in letting our life be a light unto others. If you lack passion, then I want to encourage you to begin to, as many would say, get into the good book because this will begin to create and ignite passion in your life for others, for the lost, for people that are hurt. And we will begin to see others in their situations and their pain 
through God's eyes. We will begin to love with an agape love, which is the love of God. You will begin to reach out to others that goes beyond your human capacity and capabilities. You will want to desire to affect change in others' lives because of, not that you're driven, but because you are compelled where the heart of God begins to work in you, not only just change you, but the desire to help and affect change in others' lives. Lastly, Certainly, this, these two tie together the spiritual. See, so this is not last. See, this one encompasses all of these others. So my belief, my heart is, is that if I can encourage you not to become more spiritual, but that you can understand that there's not multiple spirits, there's not multiple ways to God, there's one God, there's one way to Him, there's not multiple ways to heaven. Once that's been confirmed in your life, until I get there, what does my life consist of? What body of work will I be able to carry before him as I face my creator, my maker, and what I have done with my life? The Bible in essence teaches that everything that we do in this life, if it's not done for him, is pretty much worthless and will be burned up at judgment. Only what's done for him will last and will have eternal value. See, as we begin to burrow down and ask Christ and ask the Holy Spirit to begin to change us, reveal more of his will to us, reveal his past to us, that we learn to give more, that we learn to engage more, that we learn to help and give away to others. And my, part of my teaching today was going to be on servanthood. I don't know that I'll get there. But being willing to serve, the only way you can truly be willing to serve is to have a heart that's been redeemed and changed. Why? Because human nature will say, more for me, I don't care about others, I don't need to reach out, I'm tired, I'm overworked, I give of myself, I'm distressed, I just want to relax, sorry, too bad, figure it out. That's, that's, what, that's what typically <clears throat> how we feel and think as human beings. And, and the only thing that can truly affect change in that area of your life long term is our relationship with him. All these other things, whether it's getting adequate rest, changing your diet, how you eat, <clears throat> getting you motivated to move, being passionate about life, all of these things. And I could put 30 things down here, literally. Literally but I know that's not realistic. But I could put 30 different points of change here. I believe they will all stem from that one key aspect of your life, which is your life in God and more specifically in Christ. This will be the driver. This relationship will drive everything else. So <clears throat> you might be thinking, well, is, so you mean to tell me that these life tips, <coughs> excuse me, that this is all about that, that this is, um, you're, you're saying that I need to know God in order to be able to make, no. I think some of you are very, very disciplined and you'll make the life changes. I'm saying that the real tru truth, real truth, people are searching for truth, begins here. And your whole life as it's hidden in him, as you are learning to serve in him, and as we are faithful to him, our character, our thoughts, our attitudes, our desires, our disciplines all begin to change. Your life begins to take on order and structure. That should precede then. So when I say to you, you know, things like don't skip breakfast, you say, well, I don't have time. Well, I'm going to say to you, you got to make time. So number one, don't skip breakfast. All right? Don't. Why? Well, for just a few quick tips, um, you have, you'll, you'll typically gain weight. You're going you're gonna to become heavier. Number two, there's more insulin resistance. Your blood glucose levels are aberrant for up to the next five hours or so because your body's trying to release more stored energy that it doesn't have. So it's going to go into a process of beginning to break down other 
structural, functional musculature and fatty tissues. So you're going to begin to literally have changes in blood glucose. It'll affect your, your mental acuity. Huge issue. There's more digestive issues. So not only when we skip breakfast, not only does it lead to blood glucose or blood sugar changes that can affect how I eat the rest of the day, my energy levels, my focus. Yes, the literature states that when you skip breakfast, your ability to focus and maintain mental acuity is deeply, deeply impaired. Obesity rates, obviously, which we talked about, go up. And certainly diabetes rates. I'm going to blow through these through these pretty quickly because we'll we'll never cover all of this. Those are some real real basic tips. Next, you say well, okay, we well, don't skip breakfast. So what do I do? Well, I'm, I'm probably going to go back and then give you the specifics of these. So I don't know how we're going to do this either in the second part of this or in the next part. So I'm going to give you the, the basics are you can't skip breakfast. You can't imbalance your blood sugars. It's going to affect your physical functioning mentally, physiologically, and it'll change your chemistry, which is the last thing that you want to do. Next, so we're not going to skip breakfast. I'll give you some tips later on those life changes on how you can legitimately not skip. Well, um, I don't have time in the morning. Well, you're going to see that I'm going to start to try to get you to live more like the farmers lived. Get to bed earlier, get up earlier. Get up 15, 20 minutes earlier, you're going to make a protein smoothie because that will be your savior. That will be your salvation through the course of that morning. And it's the, the real fruit of this, the real benefit will come in the little things that you do. See, here, here's the problem, because as I'm doing this right now, I know what I begin to sense, and what I sense is, oh, you know, I thought that Joe had some, some plan cooked up. Well, I'm, I'm going to give you why you need to do certain things, why you need to be on resveratrol, why you need to be on D, why you need to be on some essential oranges. I'll, I'll cover that later. I'll get to the detail. Why you need to be on some essential greens, maybe a scoop of that in the morning. Why you need to do an essential meal plus as a smoothie. But first, you've got to know that you can't, you can't skip. You can't, you can't alter this. You can't sleep four hours a night and expect your body to make human growth hormone and repair and burn well. You can't skip meals. You can't eat one meal a day and expect your body to function physiologically in a, in a sink and in harmony that is beneficial. It just doesn't work that way. So next... How about basic detoxification? So how, do I, how can I detox? See, I think this is critical. Not only do I think, I, I know this is critical. Now, I'm not going to put you on a detox diet, but let me just give you some real basic points. I'm not even going to write them. Well, I will. Fruits. Fruits, in general, help you to detoxify. Why? Because of the fiber, because of the pectin, because of the micronutrients, it helps you to sequester and move a lot of the toxins. Yes, some of these fruits are going to be laden with pesticides and herbicides, but many of the foods that you do are, are as well. But let's make sure that we eat organic whenever we can, locally grown or homegrown, if at all possible. So fruits with nutrients, fluids, fibers, pectin will help you to detoxify. Next, green foods. Let's eat m more foods that are green. So when I get into the details later, I'm going to tell you that you need to use a scoop of our essential greens. I'll teach you why. But right now, let, let's just get more kale. Let's get more spinach. Let's get more broccoli, right? Let's just get some green foods, leafy greens, um, barley, blue-green algae. If some of you, you know, will, will be okay with taking supplements of blue-green, absolutely beneficial. Green foods help you to detoxify. Why is this important? Well, you, well, I, I think you already did a detox video. Yes, that's not what this is about. That on a daily basis, if we do these two things, you do gentle detoxification by doing, putting check marks Next, oh, I, I did eat some greens. I had a big spinach salad. I had some broccoli. That's good. I had an apple. I had some figs. I, I had an orange. Great. That's a start. Simple 
Simple tips. It doesn't mean that you have to do eight of these every single day. Next, make sure that you start your day with some, like maybe some lemon juice, some freshly squeezed lemon. Why? It stimulates enzymes. It stimulates your digestive capacities. It stimulates your liver. But then what about just eating an orange or grapefruit in the morning? Why? Well, because these types of fruits, these citrus fruits, have very much of a, almost like a fat burning, if you will. You, they alkalinize you. They help to encourage, literally, they will require more burn rate from your body in order to process and metabolize than what it gives to you. So a lot of foods, you require X amount of energy to convert and use it, but it brings so many excess calories that you are in a deficit, literally. You're bringing too much of the bad stuff. See, these foods will actually put you in a positive category because the amount of processing that the body has to go through, you literally will expend more energy, if you will, in utilizing these. It'll stoke your metabolism. So what other notes do I have here? Drinking a little bit of green tea. How about one cup of green tea a day? It has anti-cancer mechanisms, EGCGs. It will also increase your thermogenic properties, the ability to burn. It literally helps the body to burn. Next, eat more beans, beans and legumes, even mung beans. Beans will help to sequester toxins from the intestinal tract from your gut. Steel cut oats. So why not a couple times a week even steel cut oats? You can even eat them as a snack at night with some fresh berries and some walnuts or almonds cut up in it. As opposed to eating a Danish or crackers or something along those lines. Eat some raw vegetables. Keep some cut up raw vegetables at work, some celery, carrots, and how about some green peppers? Seeds, nuts, fats, oils, raw foods, raw oils will do nothing but provide health and indirectly even aid in the detox process. And last but not least, your omega oils are critical here as well. We're going to get ready to go to a break. When we come back from this break, we're going to talk about the importance of just getting to bed earlier. Why is it important? Getting to bed early and rising earlier. How does that help us? How does that set tone and rhythm? Is there such a thing as a circadian rhythm that the body is trying to follow and live by? Some of you work night turn. Some of you have a very difficult work schedule that this is not possible. I understand. For most of you, the next part of this, you can do it. It's a matter of disciplines. This is where we go awry. So I'll go back to, I'll just give you these six points. Eat smaller meals. Use smaller plates. Use smaller bowls. Don't drink sugar-sweetened beverages. Think before you eat. Think about the number of calories that you're consuming. Stop eating when you're satisfied. Be mindful and write things down. You're good. There's your six points. Why can't we follow that? Why? Why? Because we make a resolution, and then as soon as life's issues come along, the stressors of life, that wind in our lives, that storm, and it blows that leaf back over, you need to be planted and rooted. Jesus said, if you remain in him and you abide in the vine, that you'll bear fruit. We'll cover that as well when we come back. Stay with us. A couple of minutes, short little worship. Let me get some water. I'll be right back with you. Stay there. Thanks for staying with us uh, for this live stream. Life changes, not resolutions. I, I, want us to, I want us to resolve, but I want us to revolutionize how we live. Do we make changes? How do we root these changes? Let me read to you just a couple excerpts of a book called Divine Moments. And it says that um, God chooses to accomplish great things through faithful people. That's God's desire. We see it in David. We see it in Joshua. We see it in Moses. God chooses men and women. Otherwise, God could just do it all himself. 
He uses you and I as instruments and tools to affect change in this life so that our life has value and meaning. I talked to you earlier about developing passions. How do we develop a passion for life? See, I, 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 I really firmly believe that as we get in this position and ask for God's heart for our lives to be changed, see, we will begin to automatically have passion in how we live out our lives. We will be engaged in taking care of ourselves. I won't need that second plate. I will be generically on task with getting up a little bit earlier, about getting to bed a little bit earlier. I'll be on task with turning away some of those cookies, not continuing to engorge, not having one or two, or a piece of pie as opposed to two or three or half of the pie. Or for many of you with eating disorders, it's not just two cookies, it's the entire plate or a bag of cookies. How do we begin to affect that change? How do we have a passion that roots in our hearts? I believe it starts, I'm not going to get to servanthood today, I'll touch on it. But I believe when we desire to be a servant, we get our eyes off of ourselves, on others, and it becomes a natural manifestation. But let me finish with this thought. Faithfulness determines the quality of your character, which affects the quality of your life. Faithfulness brings vitality, productivity. Faithfulness brings vitality, it brings passion, it brings productivity. You will become a more productive person as you remain and abide in the vine. Faithfulness is an essential characteristic of a good reputation. Others will know that they can trust you. When you run into problems, sometimes faithfulness is the key to a positive outcome or change that you need to see. Faithfulness is necessary to maintain love. Despite our sins, God loves and remains faithful to us. Model the love of Christ to others by remaining faithful to them even when they fail you. That's the characteristics of God. Um, we fail. We make mistakes. The farmer. Let's be like the farmer. I need to get you up a little bit earlier. We still in the middle or are we going to the left? You tell me. Middle man. Whatever. I'm still at the middle. I'm here. I'm th- I want to make sure I'm talking to the right, to the right audience here. To the right farm. <laughs> it has to be loose. Sometimes we just take all this stuff and life just way too serious. And we want to do this big, huge production. And it's all good. But Lord in heaven, we need to remain kind of loose. And I like it. So that's why we remain loose here. And we have some fun. And Josiah harasses me. But nah. Nah, he doesn't. Be like a farmer. Get up earlier. There's something about a circadian rhythm. Our body's meant to function on a circadian rhythm. If I can get you up early, you will naturally be more productive. Many of you stay up too late and you get up too late because you're too exhausted. You're, you're, you're up at 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning. You're into your day too deeply. And I'm not saying that you've, you know, you've got to be up at 4.30 or 4 o'clock like the farmer. But I think there should be a reason. You should be up by 6 in the morning. There's no reason. Get to bed earlier. Begin to set time clocks and follow them. Don't stay up and watch Jimmy Kimmel or whoever it is that you watch and and, you know, then before you know it, it's 12.15, and now you're tired. And now, why? Because you've, you're beginning to alter your circadian rhythm. You're going to drive your cortisol levels. It's too stimulatory. You're beginning to break the key times for melatonin production, which is about between 10 a.m. and 3 a.m., or excuse me, 10 p.m. and 3 a.m. in the morning. We need to, we need to get to bed by 10 to 11 That should be your time frame. You should be up by 6 or so, give or take. There's not something magical about 6 a.m. Why? I want you to develop some disciplines. Let's get up. Let's read for 10 to 15 minutes. Read a psalm. I beg of you, read a proverb. It will change your life. You commit to that. Commit 10 to 15 minutes to him longer if you can. I would implore you, pray for 10 minutes. You don't know how to pray, ask God to teach you how to pray. 
The, 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 the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, will teach us how to pray and give us unction when we don't know how to pray. Pray for your family members. Be, don't pray for what you want. Pray for others. Invest in others by praying for them. This doesn't mean it's a financial investment, although that's a good thing. But you can invest in others' lives. God will make you closer to people but when you start praying for them. When you pray for them, God will unite you in the spirit world to the individuals that you're praying for. Whether it's your family members, whether it's close people, maybe it's people that you work with, you work for, or work for you. It doesn't matter. Discipline. Start your day earlier. It stokes your metabolism. We talked about stoking the metabolism with some citrus fruits. That is critical. Eat some grapefruits. Eat an orange in the morning. Um... I didn't want to go this direction, but if there's a real problem with that, we're going, to, we're going to pause here for a second. If there's a real problem with that, if you cannot get up in the morning, then you have some adrenal issues. And you might need to, you need to set up a time. Maybe towards the end of these, I'll, I'll give you some specifics as to why, but you need to set up a time. You need to do a saliva adrenal stress index test. Uh, test. Talk to our staff. Talk to Amy. Talk to Terry. Talk to Joyce Gibb, our nurse practitioner. Set up a time. You say, Joe, I can't get to sleep. I can't get up. We've got a problem. Say, Joe, I love what you're saying, but I can't do those things. I'm all wired at night. I, I could never go to bed at 10 to 11. I'm so distressed. I got so much going on in my life. Well, you're probably cranking out cortisol. You're probably cranking out a lot of norepinephrine and epinephrine, and you're driven. We need to tone this down, and yes, you can do it then you can begin to restructure. And if this doesn't happen in a week, if it takes six months, I really don't care. If it takes a year, that's fine. You're beginning to make structural changes. What I just read to you out of that little booklet about developing character, that doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen in a week. That takes years. So for you to begin to develop, that's why I don't like New Year's resolutions. We want you to make life changes. Because there's something, some thought process on January 1, I'll start doing that. But there's no depth and no character to that. I want you to begin to make these changes as life changes. Um, we, might, we might need to put you on some adrenal essentials. You might need to be on some pregnenolone, some pantothenic acid, the buffered sea ascorbates to get your adrenals moving. We might need to put you on essential sleep to get you to sleep at night. Develop the key areas here that help to restore your body, your sleep, your cycles. In the morning, can I get you to at least do something? Ten minutes. Can I get you, boy, I, I really need a new set of markers, let me tell you. Can I get you to walk? Whoa, there you go. I think we're going to throw away everything else. Ten minutes. And I've said this before, if you don't have a pet, go buy one. Or Josiah will gladly, for no charge, give you his dog. I'll pay you to take that. He, he may even pay you to take that dog. He's having some problems with this dog. But, but the key is, get out. Some of you just need to go do something. i got to get you moving for 15 minutes. It's colder depending on where you live. I'm sluggish in the morning. It's all difficult to get the ball rolling. We've got to force ourselves to make even 10, if I get you reading a psalm for 10 to 15 minutes, I get you up at 6, read for 10 to 15 minutes, go take a small walk, Joe, the weather's really bad. Then, then get some of the, the, the exercise videos, do something, do a Leslie Sansung, We've got an exercise a P90X video. We've got a exercise video that Dante did and Josiah did at the beginning about a year ago. We did. It's on, you have to go back and look it up. It's on there. Gets a set of bands, and for 15 minutes, Dante was meticulous in showing you how to move so you don't hurt yourself, how you can do a little bit of upper body, how you can do some legs. Excellent, excellent little, it's very simple. It's, it's the, the bands cost you $30 or $40, and it's no charge to go onto our live stream and watch it. All right? Movement. Why? This will begin to oxygenate you. It'll stimulate your metabolism. It just gets everything moving, all right? So movement. How about your breakfast? What do you start with? And I'm going to pretty much possibly end here with this. What do you start your day with? Well, 
I told you I'd, I'd get up, I'd get, to the, I'd get to the more specifics, okay? Big problem here. I don't have time. Well, we've got to restructure your time so that we get you to bed earlier. We've got to get to the root of why you're not, why you're so stimulated neurologically, and there's reasons for that. And then we can get you up earlier so that now I can make better decisions. I can read the Bible. I can stretch, walk, do um, a 10 to 15 minute little viewing with Dante on our live stream on how to use bands, a $30, $40 investment, no charge to watch it with us. And I just, this is how I start my day. Now it's quarter to seven or so. I don't know what time you have to be at work, but you've got to eat something. And I'm going to say to you, get the essential meal plus, our essential meal plus, one to two scoops, ice, frozen fruit, Almond milk, no sugar added or low sugar, rice milk, a smoothie, a smoothie, take you eight or nine minutes maximum, put a half a banana in there, I don't care, do not skip your breakfast. If you have time, you want to make some eggs, some free range, some organic free roaming eggs, absolutely. You want to couple that with a piece of Ezekiel bread, absolutely, do it. Uh, at this point, I'm not even going to get into the dairy thing. Uh, if you want to use a little bit of a natural granola with some Greek yogurt, um, with maybe a hard-boiled egg, do it. It's simple. That's easy. Again, make a dozen hard-boiled eggs. You shell it. This could take you four or five minutes. The Ezekiel bread and some eggs and scrambled eggs or whatever might take you a little bit longer. Okay? What I don't want you to do, do not... Do not, I repeat, do not just eat a muffin or a bagel or just some white toast. I do not want you doing this. This is a huge mistake. That is an absolute no-no. Well, I just have cereal in the morning. It's not that big. Too many carbohydrates. If you're going to do that, you've got to get a cashy type like cereal that's higher protein, um, you've got to still get another source of protein. Balance your blood sugars. Be careful of high carbs. But do not skip. And number two, don't just eat a carbohydrate, a white, floury, carbohydrate base. Why? Because it'll stifle your energy production. It'll drag you down early. It'll imbalance your blood sugars. You'll have a fatigue dropout period in about an hour and a half after you eat this. Why am I infatuated with proteins or protein um, essential meal? Absolutely not. I do it because it's a way to maintain vitality and health. Get you to bed earlier. Get you up a little bit earlier. We're going to get you to read a scripture. I'm going to get you to do 10 to 15 minutes. Go walk, go stretch, do some bands with Dante on the live stream. Eat something of quality or drink it. Don't just settle for throwing one of these guys into the toaster. If you have to... You throw two slices of Ezekiel bread in the toaster and you use some nut butters like almond or cashew or for that matter, a natural peanut butter. I don't care. I'm after the big picture here. The big picture. Why do I want Ezekiel bread? So, well, you know, it's got grains and I'm going paleo. And, you know, I... Um, I heard those grains are really bad for it. Has it you know, let's not get too far off on this. The, 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 this, is, this is just about structure function here. You've got some organic grains in here. Yes, there's some wheat, but you've got some soy. It's organic. It's non-GMO'd. I mean, it's okay. I eat Ezekiel bread. Have two slices with some nut butter. If you want, get like an, a naturally sweetened um, jelly. Um, there's one in particular that I use that does not add any sugar. They use natural sugars from the fruit. It's more of a fruit-based jelly. I believe it's a French company. They're, they're awesome. Start your day with that. All right. No muffins, no bagels, none of those white breads. Limit your coffee. It's okay. I, have a, I had a cup of coffee this morning. I have a cup of coffee every morning. I just don't want you drinking those 20-ounce cups. I don't want you drinking, you know, a, a carafe. Yeah, a Yeah, a vente. Why don't they just say, why don't you just walk into some place and just say, can I have a jug of coffee, please? Because that's what it is, a vente and all these fancy 
terminologies that we give it, and we're driving our adrenals. We're going to have dropouts as the day goes on. Some of you, if you like, I like the taste of coffee. So start, you know, maybe have a cup of regular coffee and later on have a one that mixed. I, my wife sometimes, we've even mixed caffeinated and decaffeinated. And I know we're going to get into, well, you know, half calf. We're going to get to the point, well, you know, that you know how they decaffeinate those things. There's, I, I, I get all of that. Trust me. I don't want to go there. I just want to get you to make some basic changes. And too many of you are getting up late, you're on the fly, you're not eating, you're skipping meals, or you're eating a muffin, you're drinking a ton of coffee to get you through. I got to get you to bed earlier. We got to find out why you're not getting to bed earlier. And sometimes it's just going to take discipline. Turn off the TV. You have to take some responsibility, and we will cover that as well. A, a what? A Trenta. A Trenta. Josiah has been waiting to tell me that. I can tell he's been anxiously waiting to tell me a, th a, a 30 ounce. Or maybe it's 32. We'll say 30 ounce. Trenta. Could be 32. Trenta. Trenta in Italian is 30. It's 30 ounces. Think of that. Do you know how many people are doing this? Do you know how many, even some of your kids and your grandchildren, you know how many people are doing those, those, uh, Energy drinks? Don't Energy? On Monster. Monster and all that Red Bull Rock stuff. Star. Rock Star. Give me some more names here. What else? <laughs> all those. And they're not energy drinks. They're death drinks. Seriously. There's hundreds of milligrams of caffeine. Hundreds of. Oh, it's, they're obscene. Tons of sugar. It's the worst thing for you. But if we can just start to see some structural changes, if I just get you doing a protein smoothie, if I get you up 30 minutes earlier and you spend, you honor God with five or 10 minutes in the morning, just the basics, God will honor you and the rest of your day. Get your body moving, get some blood flowing. You will feel better. Joe, I'm so exhausted in the morning. Then talk to us, get in touch with us. 888-865-9595, 888-865-9595. Set up a consultation time. Let's look at some labs. Let's get some thyroid labs. Let's get some adrenal functioning. Let's look at your hormones. There's reasons why you might feel that bad. This is not to oppress and depress you. This is to give you options. If you cannot make some of these changes, well, Joe, I just like to stay up night. I've heard this a thousand times, 2,000, probably 10,000 times. I'm just a late night person. No, you're not. No, you are not. You are not made that way. Trust me. You're not made to stay up till two in the morning and then sleep four or five hours. You're not made that way. Well, I can get by with not very much sleep. Well, you're an amazing human being if you can get by with three to four hours sleep on a regular basis. You're an amazing, your body will break down. It will break down. Bed earlier, up earlier, start your day. There's more clarity in your day. There's more focus in your day. We're done for today. We're done. We're going to wrap it. Okay. But here's what I'm going to say to you real quick. <clears throat> Servanthood. I, I talked to you about faithfulness. That is the driving force. Faithfulness. Just being faithful to him will make you faithful to others. It'll make you faithful to your family, to your children, to your spouse. It'll make you, God will make you what he desires you to be. A person of character, of faithfulness, of diligence, of substance with a spine. To do what's right. To walk away from wrong. But the real key is you've got to be connected and you can't, you know, you, you can't just do one of those 10 steps to a new you. Because, because when some steps get jumbled up, you go right back to who you really are. Which is a bad you. It's a bad me. The Bible says that there's no good thing that dwells in us in essence. The only way we can truly be changed is by the Spirit of God. That's the true change. This is not, an, this is not a Tony Robbins. This is not some humanistic like make a good confession, be a good person, say good things, you know, win people, whatever those sayings are. I'm not into any of that. Jesus said in John chapter 15, he says, I'm the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does not bear fruit, he 
prunes, he cuts us back. He trims us. Sometimes the chastisement of God, it's an indication, obviously, we learn from the scripture that he loves us, but so that we can bear more fruit. For what? Ourselves? For me? No. For him, for others. Servanthood. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken unto you. Listen to his words. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. You and I have to remain planted in him, in the word of God. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Jesus said, I'm the vine. You're the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from me, you can do nothing. You remain in him. It's amazing what you'll be able to accomplish. It's amazing what you'll be able to do. God bless you. Thanks for being with us today. We've got more. I have no long idea how, this is, how long this is going to go. Um, but life changes. I want you to be desirous. I want you to develop a passion for life changes. Don't just turn over the new leaf. It's going to blow back over. I guarantee you the winds of change in life will blow it back over. If we're rooted in him, we'll make permanent life changes. God bless you. Thanks for being with us. I look forward to our next time together. Go with him. I guarantee you he goes with you. God bless you. Have a great day.